I need now under your wings, cover me, reveal your mighty hand when the oceans rise and thunders roar. I will soar with you above the sun. Father, you are king over the floors. I will be still and know you as God. I will be still and know you as God. I rest my soul. In Christ the Lord, though he spies in quietness, in quietness and trust, when the oceans rise and thunder roar, I will soar with you above the sun. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know you are God. I will be still and know you are God. Hide me now, hide me now. Under your wing, under your wing. Cover me, cover me. We bring your, we be your mighty hand. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the stars. Father, you are king over the floor. I will be still and know you. I God, I will be still and know you. And I by rest my soul in Christ the Lord, in Christ the Lord. No his star, no his star. In quietness, in quietness and trust. When the oceans rise and thunder roar. I will soar with you above the sun. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know you as God. I will be still and know you as God. I will be still, I will be still and know you as God. I will be still and know you. I got, I will be still, I will be still, and know you, you are God. I will be still, and know you, I got, I will be still, and know you, I got, I will be still, and know you, I got. And yes, my heart keeps telling me, to sing this song because it is important for someone and it is important for you as well. It's important for me and it's important for someone out there. Before I sing the song, I just want to say this without any idea of doubt. I want to say to you that God answers prayers. The God I serve, I don't know about your God, but the God I serve, the almighty God, the creator of the universe, he sure does answer prayers. So what's the song I'm about to sing is? Oh yes, he answers prayers. Oh yes, he answers prayers. The God I serve answers prayers. Only he does answers prayers. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, God answers prayers. Oh yes, God answers prayers. The God I serve answers prayers. Yes, my Jesus answers prayer. Truly God answers prayer. He has answered many for me. The God of faith answers prayer. Only Jesus answers prayer. 
Truly God has just prayed. He has answered many for me. The Lord has said and says prayer. Only Jesus and says prayer. The God has said and says prayer. Only Jesus and says prayer. Yes, child of God. God really does answer prayers. He knows how to put a smile on the face of his children. He knows how to come through for us. He knows how to be on point. He knows how to be in time. God is never late. He's always on time. Child of God, the amount of faith you exercise is only seen and known when there is the manifestation of the thing you were exercising faith upon. If that thing has not yet manifested, child of God, you've not exercised enough faith. So the amount of faith, how much of faith you have, is not dependent on how long it has been. Some people, it took 13 years. Some people, it took 17. Some people, it took 25. Some people, it took 40 years. So it's not about the longevity. It's about the manifestation. So if you've not seen the answer to what you've been calling on to God for, then you've not exercised faith enough. You still need to keep exercising faith continuously till you see the manifestation. My people will say, pray until something happens. My people could also say, push until something happens. If the lady who is pregnant who is about to give birth pushes for one hour and the baby is not out, the baby is not out. She has to keep pushing. The only time we know that she has done enough pushing is when the baby cries. It's when the baby comes out. So child of God, you cannot afford to give up on that prayer topic, Abby. Hey, <laughs> you know why? Because it has not manifested yet. When it manifests, you know, there's still some kind of prayer you can do. Thanksgiving. That's the one a lot of us forget. Oh yeah, when God has done the things for us, then we forget how to thank him. We forget to appreciate him for all the amazing things that he has done for us. For answering our prayers, for giving us that miracle that we have been crying out for. Child of God, we have to change you. We have to change. We have to repent. Eh? We have to repent for that, from that particular kind of attitude. We have to learn to thank God when he blesses us. When God blesses us, most times we forget to thank him. And then when some kinds of things start happening in our lives, we start asking God why. And of course, why would you be asking God why? You didn't thank him when he gave you the little. You expect him to give you a big one. And then you're putting yourself in positions where he doesn't want you to be at. And then you're getting into trouble and you're blaming him. Like seriously? Like seriously? Cut God some slack. Take responsibility for your actions. You're an adult for that matter. If kids are doing those things, it's, it's, we can understand. But you, an, as an adult, you can't afford to be blaming God for things that you put yourself into. Especially if he told you not to. And he always does. Anyways. Okay, so our Bible party for today is taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 51, and it has 23 verses. Isaiah 51, and it has 23 verses. So we also want to get to find out if we're alive already. <laughs> oh my God, people. We always get to do these things like that and we make mistakes. So we want to be sure that we are live, live, live. We are live, 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 live. Let's go. Where is it? Can I find it? Are we live? People of God. Oh my. I keep clicking the wrong thing. Are we live? Oh my God. Is there somebody in the comment section? Please let us know that we're live. Are we live? Welcome, Mr. Franklin Titang. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. God bless you. We are glad to have you on a chapter a day. And uh, we hope that you can enjoy the session for today. And to all of you who are still supposed to be part of a chapter a day, we are waiting on you. We're trusting that you're going to have a great time on here. And it's going to be beautiful with a chapter a day today. So if you're in the comment section, light it up. 
and also you can um, decide to just come on on a chapter a day and bless us. You can request to come live and you can also just light up the comment section. That's another way. So let's go. Um, let's share this out. Don't forget to share this out. A chapter a day um, with your very own Princess Cleeton. And I'm sure you are all going to love it. You are all going to love it. Okay, today we're doing Isaiah chapter 51, like I said, and it has 23 verses. And yes, on here we get to know who we are in Christ, the power we possess, the things we can and cannot do, we should or should not do, so that we can live a successful Christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Heaven in view, that's the whole idea. And of course, while we're at it, we also create a King James Version audio Bible, like, um, an audio Bible so that you can be able to study the word of God. A lot of times I also got to that point. I was at that place where I was saying that, oh, it's hard for me to study the scriptures. It's hard for me to study the Bible because I used like to read. It was really a hard thing for me. But then uh, my pastor suggested to me to get an audio Bible. So I have an audio Bible that is not done by me. But now I read, I listen to my own audio Bible that I've done. I have an audio Bible that is not done by me that I started reading and then it was really good. And then at some point I got used to being able to read my fiscal Bible, even though I listen to the audio Bible more often. Yeah, I listen to the audio Bible more. Like I could listen to um, the book of Proverbs every single day for one month, days with months with 30 days, we do 30, months with 31 days, we do 31, like that, all like that. So it has been really beautiful. So I advise you to. If you love to want to know God more, you want to learn from God more, you can go ahead and study the word of God. Okay, so we get to know who we are in Christ, the power of the things we can and cannot do so that we can live a successful Christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Heavenly view, that's the whole idea. And of course, while we're at it, we trade the audio Bible and then we also study the word of God together. So let's pray and hand over the session to God. Father, we thank you for this day that you've made me rejoice. I'm glad in you. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for the miracles. We thank you for answered prayers. We thank you for all the things that you're yet to do in our lives, oh God. If you have done the ones before, if you're still doing the ones today, we know that you'll definitely do the ones tomorrow. Because we know that you're the Alpha and the Omega at the beginning and the end, the first and the last. You're omnipresent, you're omnipresent, you're omnipotent, you're omniscient. So Lord, we believe in you and we trust in you. We're always looking up to you because only you can do the things for us that no man can do. So Lord, we say thank you. Increase while we decrease. So it's going to be you and you alone. I have seen, felt, heard, and experienced throughout this edition of the chapter today, oh God. Father, I pray that you're going to bless your people with the choices of the blessings, oh God. You're going to enlighten the eyes and the ears of their understanding so that as they receive the word for today, oh God, it's going to bring change. It's going to bring transformation. It's going to bring expansion. It's going to bring liberation. It's going to bring guidance, oh God, in the lives of the people that get to connect to listen to it. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because I know you always hear an answer. You deserve all the praise. You deserve all the honor, all the adoration, because you deserve it. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness. Thank you, Lord, for your tender mercies, because you deserve it all. You are worthy of all our praise. You are worthy of all the honor. You are worthy of all the adoration. Be thou exalted, O God, because you deserve all our praise. For in Jesus' mighty and blessed name we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints shall say a dynamite. Amen, amen, and amen. So let's get to start with the birthday party. It's birthday party time. Okay, the first person on our birthday book is Mam Afani Chinda. Mam Afani Chinda, I got to know her when we're, I think when we're in the university, but I wasn't so close to her when we were at the university. And then I later on got to meet her again um, around the radio. Like I was working, when I was working at the Christian Gospel Radio, they had this, Close shop, close to the Christian Gospel Radio, close to the saloon of one of my very good friends. So I'll go and I'm, I'm having a conversation with this, my friend. And then mom, I find it, she'll come down, you know, she'll come out and then sometimes we'll talk to her and oh, she's a very nice person, very welcoming and very jovial, very, um, outspoken as well. But normally she's always very quiet. So if you don't get to talk with her or relate with her, you think that she's a very, very quiet person. Like she cannot just talk at all. You know, and if you're not really close to her, you might think like she's snobbish or she's somehow, but she's a very, very nice person. Believe me, a very, very nice person. And I'm grateful that she always supports the things I do. She's always there with me, like on my stuff. I'm so, so grateful. I don't take it for granted. God bless you. 
The next person is Mam Delifu. Mam Delifu, I got to know her on Facebook. We got to be together on a neutral friends post and all her comments were always very, really amazing. They were really like in line with what I believe in, what I stand for and all those kinds of things. So I just knew that I was supposed to, I just knew that I was supposed to connect with her. I was supposed to join her and be um, her friend like that. And we connected and it has been amazing. She always encourages me on the things I do. And I'm very, very grateful for that. I don't take it for granted. Okay. The next person is Mam Aga. Mam Aga is actually one of my friends. Uh, we're in the same high school together, GBHS Bamender. And then we kind of separated. And then later on, we reconnected again on our extra institution group. She's one amazing person. She taught us a whole lot a whole lot on her birthday. So we have this thing where we're doing birthdays and then we'll bring people to come and teach us what they do and, you know, or just teach us something really amazing. She taught us that day. It was so amazing and I just knew I had to connect with her and I connected with her and it was just amazing. It has been, it has been super duper so far and I'm really grateful to God for all that she does. She's really an amazing and a very friendly person too. The next person is Mr. E.N. Ejob. Mr. E.N. Ejob is the CEO and the founder of Zebra Comics. I mean, this guy was born for cartoons. He can do cartoons so well. See, if you desire to read cartoons or watch cartoons that has your culture imbibed in it, then Zebra Comics is a place to go. They have their, um, they have their mobile application that you can actually use. So you can download their mobile application and then you get to watch a lot of amazing cartoons that are actually related and connected to your culture. You're not just reading books of people that you don't even know anything about them and then all that, but you're reading this and you can feel and enjoy and sense your culture in the whole thing. This guy was born for this. Like I, I, I knew him when he started doing zebra comics when he had nothing, basically nothing. And today they have their very own mobile application. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. So just go to Play Store and click on zebra comics and get you your own application and get to read stories that connect and translate your culture perfectly and enjoy culture. You know, like that. And you could also get to maybe get on the app and put your stories, put your comic um, stuff that you produce. You know, I'm sure you can get that option. I'm sure they have that option. So try it out. Happy birthday to you, uh, Mr. Ajob. The next person is Pastor Eisen. Happy birthday to you, Pastor Eisen. I got to know Pastor Eisen when I started fellowshipping when my mom was fellowshipping. He was a pastor in the church. And of course, he was also doing really great stuff. He helped me to do a lot of my things for me. Like, you know, when I had to travel out, I had a little bit of issues with some of my numbers and stuff like that. He was the one who was helping me. I had some um, transactions that I wanted to do. He was the one who was helping me with all those transactions. I'm totally and completely grateful to him for all that he did. And I pray that God is going to continuously bless him. He's a great father. He's a great husband and of course he's a great servant of the most high god and he also loves it he's into it and of course he also is into the medical field as well so there are lots of things that he can get to do he can get to help you out i think he has a pharmacy no or it's a medical laboratory i'm not sure exactly he will tell you in the comment section so you can follow him and then you can go um learn about what he does the next person is Pastor Asobo Dennis. Pastor Asobo Dennis, I got to know him when I was working at the Christian Gospel Radio. We had a great time together. He's an amazing person. He loves God. He serves God with a passionate passion. He's a great husband as well, a great father as well. And of course, it has been amazing. It was an amazing ride with him. I think I kind of left the radio before him and then I left and came back again and then he had left because I think he was transferred to a distant place, to a faraway place. So he had to um, leave the radio and go do the work of God in another town. Thank you so much, Pastor Sibo Dennis, for the service of God that you did at the Christian Gospel Radio, and God bless you. The next person is Mr. Sherene. Mr. Sherene, I got to know him when I was in, I think, the Christian Gospel Radio, too. I got to know a lot of people at the Christian Gospel Radio. Oh, my God. And, of course, he was always sharing. He was always making people listen to the Christian Gospel Radio. I mean, it was just outright beautiful. I just loved it all the way. 
Like, you know, that kind of thing where they were always just participating on the radio and participating. And then at some point I was like, Oh, I want to see a couple of these, my listeners. Let me find a way to meet them. I get to see them and get to know them. So I met Mr. Sherene and all. We were talking at this pressing. Um, Pastor Joe, I told you guys about Pastor Joe recently, right? So they are even born in the same one. That's cool. I told you guys about Pastor Joe the other time. So he's working at Pastor Joe's, um, um, pressing. He was working there. And so we got connected and all, and it was really nice. When I used to come there, people used to be surprised. Like, that's your friend? Like, you know this girl? She's the one on the radio, right? Like, yeah. Everybody was like, I was a small village celeb. <laughs> I beg, I'm just kidding, no, I'm just a baby girl of Jesus. I beg, so let me know at the, so anyways, like, when I used to come there, the people used to be happy, and then they would buy my stuff, I mean, they would patronize my business, and all that kind of stuff, I was really grateful. At some point, I think I was putting my donuts or peanut at their shop, I can't remember which one I was putting, at their pressing, Pastor Joe gave me an opportunity, and I really, really did appreciate it. Happy birthday to you. The last but not the least is Mam Bell Niba. Um, Mam Bell Niba, actually, I got to know her on a mutual friend's live stream. So we're on this live stream and we're having a certain subject. It was a very sensitive subject, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And then people were just saying all kinds of things. And then I remember that we started talking with each other. We're commenting on each other's comments, replying each other's comments and stuff like that because we believed in what both of us believed in. Like we, we believed in the same thing and we saw the, 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 we saw the topic they were talking about in the same way. So I started commenting, we started commenting on that each other. And then my friend made me to come live. And then I said a couple of things. And then she was like, oh, that's so cool. And then we're talking and talking. And then we realized that we're both in Thailand. It was just awesome. Oh, my God. It was just amazing. I'm like, ah, it's not only that I like this girl. I like her vibe and everything. She's also in Thailand. I'll have to look for a way. We met. We actually met. She supports my stuff and all that. We don't talk as much. We met, it didn't even take a long time she left. <laughs> I was crying home. But anyways, I'm looking forward to go visiting her someday. I hope that I'll be able to meet her and we'll be able to have a great time and catch up. And of course, she's a very friendly person. She's very outgoing. She's very straightforward. If something is not going well, she'll tell you straight up. It's not going well. She's not going to mince her words or something, something, something. I know some people feel like, oh, being straight is not all that there is. Sometimes you have to be straight with people. All these going back and forth, hiding and backbiting and bitterness and anger and all that. It's not helping any of us. It's not helping any of us. So let's try to do things right. Okay, then the, let's go. This is everybody on our birthday list today. Happy birthday to you, Mama Fanny Chinda. Happy birthday to you, Mam Deli Fu. Happy birthday to you, Mam Aga. Happy birthday to you, Mr. Ian Ejob. Happy birthday to you, Pastor Heisen. Happy birthday to you, Pastor Subo Dennis. Mr. Sherene. And a very special happy birthday to you, Mam Bell Neighbor Anne. So God bless you all, birthday people. Let's get to pray for all the birthday persons. We don't pray only for the people that are born today. We don't pray only for the people that are on our birthday list. We pray for every single person who's born today. So if you're born today, this prayer is for you. Claim it, own it, and it's going to work whatever it has to work for you just as it has been working for every other person that gets to receive the prayers. Welcome, my little puppinets, Mom, Frederick, Sabrina, Kev, Blandine. I actually thought of you today, honestly, like in the day or in the evening, sometime early evening, I actually thought of you today and you're here today. I'm so glad, glad to have you here, darling. And say, hi, Mama, today I came back from school more earlier than always, was hoping to meet you online and glad I did. Oh, glory to the almighty God. I am glad you did too. Hope you had a great day at school, darling. Okay. This is my big journalist coming up, you know, like she's going to do a whole lot in the media industry. And I'm so proud to have her as my little puppinette. She's a very smart and brilliant young lady. And I'm proud to be connected to her in this really special way. I love you, darling. Okay, so let's go. Let's pray for the birthday people and then we'll get back on with our Bible party. Like I said, our Bible party is taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 51. And Isaiah chapter 51 has 23 verses. Isaiah 51 has 23 verses. So let's get this Bible party started. 
as soon as we get done praying for the birthday people. Father, we thank you for all these amazing people who were born today, O oh Lord. We thank you for blessing them. We thank you for opening the windows of heaven upon their lives, O oh God, and rebuking every devourer in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for pouring out the treasures of your blessings upon their lives, not by power, not by mind, but by your spirit. Lord, we pray, O oh God, we thank you for opening doors to them that no man can shut and shutting every door that is not of you, O oh God. Father, we thank you for causing them to be true leaders, face setters, and wall changers in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for leading, leading them around right oh god for showing them the way that they should go so they don't depart lord we pray oh god that you give them all that it takes to go and conquer their world perfect all that concerns them give them a sound 426 state a state of continuous laughter singing jubilation celebration and dancing all to your glory oh god father that if you tarry to come they'll be here same time next year maybe for this program or another they'll be here Thanking you and blessing your holy name for all the marvelous and wonderful things that you've done in their lives. You're doing and you're still to do, oh God. Father, we are forever grateful. We don't take this for granted, oh God. We appreciate you, oh God, for adding a new year to the lives of these amazing people. Lord, we pray that you're going to write beautiful stories on the pages of their lives, oh God. Give them reasons to sing and celebrate and jubilate and dance and and, and serve you and honor you and adore you for the rest of their days, oh God. But I pray that you're going to diligently open their eyes so that they can see those that are supposed to be destiny of us to and strategically position themselves to help these people when the time is right and also lord you're going to strategically position their own destiny of us all around them so that when they also cry for help help is going to be made available for them in standing lord you say we should call on you and you answer it and show us great and mighty things which you've never known lord let that be a practical reality for this one so god father i pray oh god that before they call you answer before they cry out you will hear because you are yeshua when we call you, you do answer. When we call you, you deliver. There's no name greater than yours. There is none like you in all the earth. Father, we're forever grateful. We don't take you for granted, oh Lord. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for all that you keep doing for us for the rest of our days, oh God. But I will pray that you add many more years to the lives of these people, all for your glory. Lord, I pray that you cause them to increase in wisdom and stature, gaining favor before God and before men, that no weapon formed or fashion against them shall prosper. Any tongue that rises against them in judgment, you shall condemn. Lord, I pray that you cause them to be a blessing in their generation and beyond, oh God, that no one is going to be able to get to them because their lives will be continuously healed in Christ and God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for constant protection, provision, guidance, and all the goodness, O oh Lord, that you have in store for these ones who were born today, O oh Lord. Father, I pray that you continuously bless them, divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to be their best, and divinely disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to stagnate or retrogress. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we say thank you. We appreciate you, O oh God. For your faithfulness, we say thank you. For your goodness, for your loving kindness, for your tender mercies, O oh Lord. We are grateful, O oh God. We cannot thank you enough. You are God all by yourself. From beginning till the end, there is no place for argument, O oh God. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you honor. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you're going to divine, that there's their gifts will make a way for them, causing them to stand before kings, not before mean men. Let their lights shine before men, that so people will see your good works in their lives and glorify your Father within heaven. And as they are fulfilling purpose and doing that which they were created to do with God, when they get to a place where they feel overwhelmed, they feel like they want to give up or back out, they'll hear a clean, loud, clear voice that's going to say, this is the way warm that we need, they will not depart, they will not stray. Take them to the top and teach them all that it takes to get to the top and only get there, but get there and stay there permanently. We say thank you. We appreciate you, Lord, because you're a faithful father. You never fail. You never sleep nor slumber. Lord, we thank you for opening doors to them that no man can shut. We thank you for shutting every door that is not of you. Lord, we are grateful. We can't thank you enough. Write beautiful stories on the pages of the lives that you've opened today, oh God. All for your glory. We are forever grateful to you. We are forever grateful for the cross. Lord, we seal every prayer request with the blood of Jesus and we say thank you because we know you've done it already. It is signed, sealed, done, and dusted. In Jesus' name we pray and all the saints shall say ginormous amen. For well, you all know that I love to sing the amen, right? So let's sing it. Amen. 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 Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their life. Amen. I still pray. Amen. Let it be. In their life. Silver prayers. Amen. 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 With the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. 
in the right in the right in the right in the right as we pray god bless you all tremendously and may you your bands with all good things and enlarge your coast and do for you that which no man can do but him alone have a blessed, happy birthday. I always get to say I love you so very much, but God loves you way, way more. Je vous dis, je vous aime, mais je vous aime plus, plus fort que moi. Joyeux anniversaire. Mm. Yeah. Bisous, bisous. Happy birthday, everyone. I love you so very much. May the good Lord Put money to me, money in your pockets. Blessings to me, blessings in your life. Favor to me, favor in your life. Even as the close you the garment of praise, honor and favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and man Frederick Blanding says, Dear God, the wish I love to ask for the people born today is you create an impact in their lives and may every plan you make for them let it work and come to pass in Jesus' name. Oh, that's a beautiful prayer. People of today, did you hear that prayer? That my little penis made for you. Oh, you're blessed. You're totally and completely blessed, people. You're all blessed, people. You were blessed, people. You are blessed. Okay, so it's time, guys. Let's go. It's Bible party time. Are you ready? Ready or not, here I come, guys. Let's see. Let's move the noise. Okay, we're going to need that after, but first, let's read the Bible. Okay, we're going to need this too. Almost long. Let's give this Bible party. Hmm. Okay, are you ready, guys? Ready or not, here I come. Isaiah 51, and he has 23 verses. Let's go. Ready? Ready, ready, ready. Oh, guys, I missed that. Sorry. That flipped. Sorry, okay. Okay, let's go now. We're ready. Oh my god. What happened? Oh my god. I thought this was working. Sorry guys, it looks like our Bible is gonna go off. That is not good. That ain't good. I hope it doesn't. Sorry guys. I'm trying to get a phone charger. A Bible phone is almost going out. I hope it doesn't go out on us. Okay, I'm back. I am back. I hope it doesn't go out on us. So, oh, we're reading the Bible. We'll have to be far away. Like that. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. Now well, let's read the Bible first. One, we're going to be solving it, like talking about it. Then we're going to use this option. Okay. Are you guys ready? Let's go. Isaiah chapter 51. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock whence are ye yearned, and to the hole of the... Oh my. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. Isaiah chapter 51. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. 
Look unto the rock whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit where ye whence ye whence whence whence. Why do I keep saying where? I'm so sorry. Oh, guys, it's just twenty-three verses. I don't know why I'm tense. Isaiah chapter fifty-one. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bear thee you. For I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving, and the voice of melody. Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation, for a Lord shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. My righteousness is near, my salvation is gone forth, my arm shall judge the Lord, the isles shall wait upon me, and mine arm shall they trust. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look upon the earth beneath, for the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment. And they that dwell therein shall die in like manner, but my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their revilings, for the moth shall eat them up like a garment, and the worm shall eat them like wool, but my righteousness shall be forever and my salvation from generation to generation. Awake, awake, put on strength. O arm of the Lord, awake, as in the ancient days, in the generations of old. Art thou not it that had cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? Art thou not it which had dried the sea, the waters of the great deep, that had made the depths of the sea a way for the ransom to pass over? Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. I, even I, am he that comforted you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die and of the son of man, which shall be made as grass and forgettest the Lord thy maker that had stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and had feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor as if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. But I am the Lord thy God that divided the sea whose waves roar the Lord of hosts is his name, and I have put my words in thy mouth, and I have covered thee in the shadow of my hand, that I may plant the heavens, and lay the foundations of the earth, and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Thou hast drunken the dregs of the cup of trembling, and wrung them out. There is none to guide her among all the sons whom she had brought forth. Neither is there any that taketh her by the hand of all the sons that she had brought up. These two things are come unto thee. Who shall be sorry for thee? Desolation and destruction and the famine and the sword. By whom shall I comfort thee? Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull in a net. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the, re the rebuke of thy God. Therefore hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. Thus saith thy Lord, the Lord, and thy God that pleaded the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. 
Thou shalt no more drink it again, but I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, Bow down, that we may go over. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. This is the word of the Lord. And all the saints shall say a ginormous thanks be to God. So yes, let's study the word of God together. What did you learn on this particular chapter? Let's go. We're starting all the way from chapter one. And like I said, if you're just tuning in, this is a chapter a day, aka a car for sure. On here, we get to know who we are in Christ, the power he possesses, the things you can and cannot do so that we can live a successful Christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Heaven in view. That's the whole idea. So let's go. Let's go. What did you learn? What did you learn? What did you learn? Says, hearken unto me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock whence ye are yearned, and to the hole of the pit when he is at deep. God dug us from the pit, the pit of the Mary claim, and he set our feet upon the rock. God brought us out of darkness into his righteousness. We need to hearken unto him. We need to depend on him. We need to rely on him. We need to look to him. There is no other place. There is no other way. You can only be saved through Christ Jesus. So if you're looking to the left or to the right, if you're, if you're focused, if you're hearkening to people instead to God, you'll get in trouble. If you're hearkening to your parents or your mother or your father or your sisters or your friends instead to God, you'll get yourself into so much trouble. If you're hearkening to your selfly, to your fleshly desires, you're going to get into a lot of trouble. You need to hearken to God. You need to hearken to Jesus. You need to hearken to the Son of the Most High. Hearkening to Him is connecting to Him. How do you connect to Him? By studying the Word. How do you connect to Him? By, by praying. How do you connect to Him? By communing with Him. Fellowshipping with Him. They say Jesus used to come down into the, in the, the Garden of Eden in the cool of the day and have this very special moment with Adam and Eve and all that. That's what was happening. But then when we see, when we see in Adam, they were excused from the garden and so that relationship was no longer there. But now when you become a child of God, when that sin nature is taken away and righteousness is imputed on you through Christ Jesus, his finished work on the cross, then you can be able to now come back and have this relationship with God. And so you have to continuously hearkening to him, which is by studying the word of God, which is by prayer, by fasting and all the things that you can do to be able to connect to him. Do it as often as possible. It will help you. And he says, look unto Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. And of course, because we're seeds of Abraham, the blessings that God blessed him, they are ours. They are ours. So we should look unto him. We should see how he obeyed God. God told him, leave your country and your kindred and go to a place where I will show you. And up he went. 75 years old man. Who does that? In this our generation, some of us who even know where God is taking us to, we even know where God is sending us to. We know where God wants to send our parents to, our aunties or our brothers or those older people in our lives. We know where God wants to send them to. We are even still skeptical and we are still afraid. Then imagine this man. He didn't even know. Abra Abraham did not have an example. Today we even have an example to tell us that if God is telling you that up and go, he will fulfill his promise in your life. We have ex Abraham as an example. In Abraham's day, he had no example, but the faith he had in God, these people had reckless faith, man. I mean, the faith Abraham had in God, he just upped and left. God says, leave that place. He just did it. No question. No question asked. God, what are you saying? Me, leave my country and my kindred. Can you see how old I am? Do you know how much maybe he had invested a lot in his country? Do you know how much I probably invested in this land? God did not even look, he didn't even question. Me, sometimes when I question God, he will just reach a point there. When he has answered me, I answer me, I know that the answer is correct. He will just ignore me. And I know when he ignores me, I know that we are not changing the matter. We will solve the matter the way he has said we will solve it. That's how it is. So. That's how it is. It says, um, for the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and he will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. 
Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. See, when God changes your situation, when God changes your wilderness area, when God fixes you, when God comforts your heart, Child of God, it will be singing all the way. See, I've danced from yesterday to today. I have sang. I have just been so grateful. My heart is overjoyed. I don't even know how to express my joy. See, God is a miracle worker. God is an, a prayer answering God. When you pray, trust God, believe and hold on to him. Hold on to him till the end. You see our forefathers, the people of old in the Old Testament, they died holding on to the promise. And they didn't even experience it. But they held on to it until they died. Then we who have seen the promise, we know it's here. We're experiencing it. Why is it the ones that are not? I mean, I don't understand what is wrong with us. We need help. We truly need help. Honestly. It says, Hacking unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation, for a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. Hearken unto God. Hearken unto God. Listen to what he's saying. Is God that will give you the perfect direction. Is God that can give you perfect guidance. Is God that can lead you aright. Is God that can take you to the perfect place. Is God that can show you where he wants you to be. Is God that can lead you to that place. Safely and soundly. Only him. So there is no way you cannot hearken unto him. There is no way you can't listen to him. If you don't listen to him, know that you're ending up for destruction or you're looking forward to destruction. You're looking forward to get destroyed totally and completely. Oh, yeah. It says, Hearken unto me, my people. Give ear unto me, O nation. For a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. My righteousness is near. My salvation is gone forth. And my arm shall judge the people. The owls shall wait upon me. And on mine arm shall they trust. Of course, when we trust in his arms, when we hang on him, when we stick to him, when we hold on to him, we're sure that we're safe. We're sure that we're not going to fall. He says, and I'll rest under the shadow of his wings. When you're under the shadow of his wings, you know you're covered. When your heart, when your life is hidden, Christ in God, you know that you're unstoppable and you're untouchable. Because if anybody has to get to you, they have to get through Jesus, through God before to you. That if they can get past Jesus and God, then they should be great people. Then you would have to give up at that point. But you know that no man mortal can bypass Jesus God before getting to you. But now that's if you stay hid in Christ and God. Because if you come out from that hiding place, you're on your own. You are on your own. No? You're on your own. Anyway, let's keep going. Say, so lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke. And the earth shall wax old like a garment, and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Oh my. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from which come and my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Let us lift up our eyes to the heavens. We should always look up to God. The arm of flesh will fill you. If you're looking up to man, if you're looking up to some particular person, those people and those things will fill you. Only God can never fail. Only God shall never fail. Salvation is forever. Righteousness is forever. It cannot be abolished. It cannot be destroyed. Salvation cannot be abolished. Salvation cannot be destroyed. You need to get it right. You need to know this and know peace. So that you should stop struggling. You should stop looking for these other means and these other methods to get things. They cannot come like that. They can only come through Jesus Christ. Angie! Ah, no, my friend. Salvation can only come from God. Okay, guys. So this one now is going to be far away from us. We'll not be able to see this. Oh my God. Lord help us. Oh no. That fell now. Sorry guys. <gasps> oh my God. Okay, so we have to come closer because this thing has a low battery. Okay. It says 
for the moth. Oh no. Okay, now this is where we are. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be afraid of their reviling. When you're in Christ, when you know that God is backing you, when you know that God is with you, you're not going to be afraid of whatever men will do or whatever some, some people can, you know, people can threaten you, they can do all these things, but you know that when you're with God, when you have the right backing, when God is backing you up, they cannot do you, they cannot destroy you. They can only do as much as they want to do, but they cannot destroy you. That's just the truth. Oh yes, it's the truth. So you will not be afraid of all this reviling. You will not be afraid of all the things that people will say. You will not be afraid of all the things that people will do. Because you know that God has promised and God has said he will be with you all the way. He will never leave you nor forsake you. That's his promise and his promise. All his promises are here and amen. He's a faithful God. He's a God who never fails. He's a God who never sleeps nor slumber. That's true. And it says, for the moth shall eat them up like a garment, and the worm shall eat them like wool. But my righteousness shall be forever, and my salvation from generation to generation. God's salvation is always going to last forever. His righteousness will last forever. But you see these wicked people, you see these mean people, they would have an end. Their end will come at some point. So you don't need to bother. You don't need to cry. You don't need to be afraid. You don't need to freak out. God is in, is still in the business of doing great and wonderful things for you. He's about to do awesome things for you. You have to believe it. You have to believe it. That's your part. Your part is to believe. And believe when you believe something, you know it's true, it's real. You act like you really believe it. So do you know who you are in Christ? Do you know that because you carry Christ on the inside of you, you have a spiritual entourage all the time because they have to be there like carrying Jesus along. So yeah, oh my God. Do you know that? Do you know that? You have a spiritual entourage because you carry Jesus automatic. And it says, awake. Put on strength, or am of the Lord. Awake, as in the ancient days, in the generation of old. Are thou not it that had cursed Rahab and wounded the dragon? So someone is asking, like, it's God. It's God who did all these things. And so you think God is not going to save you now? You think God is not going to help you now? He's still in the business of doing great things. He's still in the business of dealing with all the wicked people. All the wicked people shall get their reward here, just as you are also going to get your reward here before the reward in heaven. Yours is a double blessing. Before the people will get punished and sanctioned in hell, they will also get their rewards for their wickedness here on earth. You're supposed to believe that because it's true. You have to believe it. It says, therefore, the redeemed, no. I thou not eat which had dried the sea, the waters of the great deep that had made the depths of the sea away from the ransom to pass over? It's God who did all these things. It's God who created the universe. It's God who made water in dry lands. It's God who made um, rivers in the desert. It's God who walked on water. It's God who ascended into heaven. Is God who canceled and changed all those things, you know, the natural causes of science, what people have said was, was not possible. He made them possible. Is God who called light out of darkness? Is God who created things that be not? He called them for things that be not as though they were and they came to being. It's God. That's the same God you're serving. That's the same God you should be looking up to. That's the same God you should be trusting in. And he says, um, verse 11 therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion and everlasting joy shall be upon their head they shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning shall flee away the redeemed of the Lord will have a great time with God when the time comes Christ second coming. 
Will you be there? If Christ comes today, if Christ comes this moment, are you going to be taken? Or will you be crying, oh, and I know. Or will you be a living epistle, read of men? Or would you be a castaway? Would you hear that good and faithful servant come to my right and sit at my right hand or at my left hand? Or are you going to hear, depart from me, I know you not, you workers of iniquity? What's it going to be? What is it going to be? It says, um, it goes on to verse 12 and it says, um, I, even I, I he that comforted you, who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of man that shall die and of the son of man which shall be made as grass? Like why are we afraid of men? A lot of times some of us do things because we're afraid of what man will do or what man will say or what man will think. Why are we so afraid of men? And these men are human beings like us and someday they will die. But God is living forever and God says that he will never leave us nor forsake us. He will be with us through it all. So why are we so afraid of men? Why? The fear of man does not lead you anywhere but to destruction. It's the fear of God that is the beginning of wisdom. Hearing God means revering God. Knowing those things that he loves and doing them and those things that he doesn't love, you have scorn from them. You dread them like a plague and you stay away from them as much as you can. That's revering God. Okay. And he goes on to say, and forget this, the Lord, he says he's a comforter. He's a comforter, he's a healer, he's a peace giver, he's a way maker, he's a promise keeper, he's a light in the darkness. I mean, God is just a lot of things. We just need to get to him and then let him reveal these areas of himself to us. Let him unveil these parts of himself to us. We have to. We have to. And it says, And forget says the Lord, thy maker, that has stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and has feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor, as if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? When you forget the Lord, your maker, you're in trouble. That's that's a truth. And the foundations of the earth and has feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor, as if as if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? See, God's fury is more than the fear of any human being. So if you want to fear something, fear God's fury. Yeah, I don't mind people being scared of hell and then coming to know God. Because when you have that encounter with God, you will so experience the love that that fear is going to fizzle out. But then we need you to get to have that encounter first. So if fear of hell is going to make you get the encounter, by all means, fear hell. Because hell is not a beautiful place. It wasn't even made for you in the first place. But if you make the choice of not accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are going to, by all means, end up in hell. Don't say I didn't make a choice. By not making a choice, you have made a choice already. That's how it is. By not making a choice, you have automatically made a choice. Okay. It says that um, the captive... The captive exile hasten it that he may be loosed and that he should not die in the pit, not that his bread should fail. But I am the Lord thy God that divided the sea, whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is his name. Welcome, Minister Mark. Welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Oh my God, we'll miss you on the chapter today. Yay, 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 yay. Thank you for coming. It says, but I am the Lord thy God that divided the sea, whose waves roar. The Lord of hosts is his name.
and it says um that's god that's god for you right god does all these amazing things he can cut the sea for you he can cause you to walk on water but you also have to have faith you know you also have to have faith you also have to have faith and God can make the seas to roar. He can make thunders. He, you, there's a part of the Bible that says that the Lord who has a voice like thunder, like when he speaks, it's like thunder. And there's a time that he has this small, still voice. Like, you know, God just has all these ways he can appear to you, all these ways he can speak to you, all these ways he can address you, all these ways he can get to you. You need to know how God speaks to you. You need to know. And you only know how God speaks to you when you have a relationship with him. If you don't have a relationship with God, you will not be able to know when he's speaking. You'll be confused. You'll be confused. And you might start hearing any kind of voice. Even yourself or your flesh can be speaking to you and you think it's God. The Bible says the sheep know my voice and I know the voice of my sheep. Do you know the voice of God? If God speaks to you today, would you know this is God? Would you hear him? Would you listen? It says, but I am the Lord thy God that divided the sea, whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is his name. He's telling you who he is. He's telling you his capabilities. Basically, it's like this person comes here and says, why do you think you're the most qualified for this job? And then he's presenting his CV. Why, why should I believe you that yes, you can save me. You're the savior of the world. You, you can, you can protect me. You can keep me. And God is presenting his CV. See me? I created the heavens and the earth. You see me? I'm the one who can control the winds. I can control the storms. I can say peace be still and the storms will be still. That's me. Yeah, that's me. You remember that scenario? I'm the one who walks on water. I'm the one who created the heavens and the earth. Do you know me? Yeah, I'm the one who has the earth as my food stool. He's given a CV, a proper CV for that matter. <laughs> oh my God. He's the Lord of hosts. And he says, and I have put my words in thy mouth and I have covered thee in the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth. And say unto Zion, thou art my people. God wants to, God wants to call you his own. But you have to toe the line. You have to be in the place where he can confidently call you his own. He cannot call you his own when you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. No, we all are not God's children. We all are God's creation. God's children are the ones who have accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Don't get it mixed up. Don't get it twisted. We all are God's creation. But we all are not God's children. Yeah. Do you know the difference? The difference that one has accepted Jesus Christ and their personal Lord and Savior, the other hasn't. So to become a child, to become a joint heir with Christ, you need to accept Jesus Christ's finished work on the cross of Calvary. You need to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. That's how you become a child of God. Okay? Don't get it twisted. Okay, Minister Mark, is Minister Mark coming live today? I can't see how to invite her. Work though. But if she comes, it's a bonus for us. If she doesn't, we'll manage. <laughs> and it says, there is not, uh, no. Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord. The cup of his fury. Thou hast drunken the dregs of the cup of trembling and wrung them out. There is none. Oh, yeah. Minister Mark is coming to say hi to us. No, no, no. no. no I just stopped by to say hi. I have a session starting shortly. Oh, my it, God. Has, it was supposed to have started already, so I'm just waiting for the call. Yay. Thank you for coming. God bless you. <laughs> Bye. We're glad to see your fine face. Ah. Oh, yes. We're so glad that we saw your fine face. Thank you so much. Minister Mark also does morning devotions. She does evening devotions as well. And, of course, she's almost getting off social media soon till next year. That's so cool. I, I can't believe that. I wish God can give me that kind of... No, let me not think that kind of thing, my baby. 
Anyways, God is sovereign, so he can do whatever he has to do. We're finishing a chapter already in 2024. Maybe God is going to give us a break after that, and then he gives us an next assignment. Who knows? Anyways, while we're at it, we're loving it all. We're doing what we have to do and enjoying the whole process. Okay, guys. It says that awake, awake, stand up for Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Oh, God. Oh, Lord, they say, if God can be for you, who can be against you? Then now, if God is against you, who is going to be for you? You are in so much trouble. People of God, you don't want to be in that position. You don't want to be in that place. Oh, yeah, you don't want to be there. You don't want to be there. And so it says, um, there is no one to guide her among all the sons whom she had brought forth. Neither is there any that take it her by the hand of all the sons that she had brought up. These two things are come unto thee. Who shall be sorry for thee? Desolation and destruction and the famine and the sword. By whom shall I comfort thee? If you don't go the right way, these are the things that are going to happen to you. If you go the right way, the blessings are going to come. If you go the wrong way, the destruction is going to come. The desolation is going to come. You know, your wilderness experience is going to be forever, forever. Like until you get it right, God cannot come and make live rivers of living waters in the wilderness for your sakes he cannot so it says thy sons have fainted they lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull in a net they are full of the fury of the lord the rebuke of thy god therefore hear now this thou afflicted and drunken but not with wine so you can be drunk, but not with wine. You can be drunk with the Holy Ghost. You can be drunk. I said, we're drunk with laughter and happiness. Some people were like, huh? Yeah, what? I said, yeah, I'm drunk with laughter and happiness. Because a lot of nice things are happening to me. A lot of nice things have been happening to me. This entire holiday, this has been a very spectacular holiday for me. And it's not done yet. God ain't done with me yet. He ain't done with me yet. And I know that he's about to still do something really, really super spectacular. So I'm trusting in him. I'm believing. I'm having faith. I'm holding on and looking forward to it. The Bible says that and God, who was Jesus, he looked at the glory that was set before him and he endured the cross. Oh, my. Oh, my. I don't know the glory that is set before you, but my first glory that is set before me is heaven at last. So I'm enduring my cross. The Bible says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yes, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So you want to carry your cross and follow him. And it says, um, it says, thus saith the Lord, the Lord, thus saith thy Lord, the Lord, and thy God that pleaded the course of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. Ha! God is about to take off that trouble. He's about to take, for that, take off that fury from your life. He's about to take you out from that place of suffering, that place of, of, of I don't know, I don't know what position you're in. I don't know what place you're at. God is about to take you off from that place. Hey, child of God, just hang in there a little more. Don't give in to the flashy flashiness of the enemy. Don't. Don't. God is about to take you off. He's about to take that cup of trembling. He's about to take the dregs of the cup of his fury away because he has seen that you have become repentant, because he has seen that you are ready to do his will, because he has seen that you are ready to walk in the place of purpose. You are ready to walk in line with his directions and his leading. He has seen it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Child of the Most High. And it says that he's about to take it out of your hand because he's pleading your cause. God, when God is looking at you, he's seeing Jesus. He ain't seeing you. He's seeing Jesus. And Jesus is there making intercession for you day in, day out. So when God is looking at you, he's seeing Jesus. He's seeing the blood. The blood of Jesus is speaking better things on your behalf. 
oh child of god you are you are not you're not you're not just getting this god god is standing the gap for you in the person of jesus and so you cannot be moved you should know oh my god you should know what God has in store for you. You should know the plans and the promises that God has for you. You should know what God has promised that he's doing for you. And he's doing it with a passionate passion because he loves you that much. If he could do so much for you when you were still a sinner, what do you think he's going to do for you now that you're born again? What do you think? Think, think about it, people. If Christ could die for you while you're a sinner you think it's not that you're born again that he will be withholding things from you or he'll be letting you to just stop by any hour any hour for no good reason ah you got to be kidding then you're joking then you don't know the god that you're serving you don't know the god who saved you you don't know the god almighty we're talking about here you don't know you just don't know and he says but i'll put it into the hand of them that afflict thee which have said to thy soul, bow down, that we may go over. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. Oh, God is about to deal with your enemies for you. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, say the Lord. You don't need to revenge on them. There are people who have afflicted your soul. They, they didn't only afflict your body. They afflicted you until it, it has gotten to your soul. Your spirit man is downcast. David asked himself, why is my, my spirit, why are thou downcast? That there are people that have just so bored at you and wearied you until even up to your soul. God is about to transfer the wahala from you onto them. He's taking the cup of the dregs of his fury from you and he's giving it to your enemies. <clears throat> That's what we know you have suffered in. It has come to an end, child of God. God is taking it from you and giving it over to your enemies. Hey, hey, hey. child of the most die. How cool can it get? How awesome can it get? It doesn't get any better than this. I trust God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, eh? acknowledge God. He will direct your path. He will do things things for you that will blow your mind he says call on me and i'll answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not hey child of god believe god trust god when he tells you trust him when he says it believe him that's what god is about to do for you are you ready for god even are you ready at all well i don't know about you but for me and my household who we'll serve the lord we're ready we're ready for god to take that affliction from us and lay it upon our enemies who have afflicted us who have asked us time without number where is that your god our god is about to show up for us and you ain't gonna know what hit you <laughs> so if you're on my enemy list you are better take a quick turn and get on my friends list before you get in trouble because what God is about to do for me, <laughs> you ain't going to see this coming. And it's going to so deal with you. So you are better. You have better. Brace yourself for what's coming. Okay, guys. And this is where we're wrapping up for today with our chapter a day. I'm sure you had fun like I did. I did have fun. I'm super duper excited. I don't even know how to share my excitement so much. But just know that I'm super duper excited. And it's all thanks to God. because. Sorry, guys. That's a second. It's all thanks to God because God answers prayers. God is a prayer answering God. And I'm grateful to him that he answers prayers as much as he does. So this is what we're wrapping up for today. It has been a chapter a day, your February Bible study program and audio Bible creation program. And of course, tomorrow is another day by the grace of God. Thank God it's Friday. Yeah. But like I told you guys, every day seems like Friday. Every day seems like weekend for me. So I don't really know the difference apart from the fact that I'm doing a chapter a day. And then I've been moving a lot lately. So I kind of figure out the days, you know. But on a normal basis, when I'm in one place for a very long time, I kind of miss out on the dates, you know. 
<laughs> but I always never really forget Sunday because Sunday is just beautiful. Considering the fact that I'm in physical church, people, I'm always uh, so excited. I always anticipate to be in the presence of God. It's good when Christians come together, you know, do not forsake the assemblies of the brethren. Yeah. There's some kind of oil, there's some kind of grace, there's some kind of power that comes with being in the assembly of the brethren. I don't know how to explain it, but I can feel it. I wish God could open my heart so you guys see the feeling, like how my heart is just doing jolly, jolly. <laughs> and yes, God has been doing spectacular things for me, you know. Today I was actually talking to myself and I was saying things like, hmm, well, it looks like every time I go to church, I'll be testifying and people will feel like, what does she think? Who does she think she is? I don't think I'm nobody. Who. I'm just a person that is always very grateful for the testimonies that God gave me, and I just can't keep them. I can't stay silent. I must sing for his joy has come. Oh, he's turned my morning into dancing again. He's lifted my sorrow. I can't stay silent. I must sing for the joy has come. Oh, sound box. Don't even try. I know how to do sounds. <laughs> okay, guys. So this is where we're wrapping up for today. Tomorrow is another day. It's going to be Isaiah chapter 52. I'm hoping and trusting that you all are going to be here. You're going to read ahead of time. And we're going to come back here and have a swell time together. I'm really believing and trusting God and hoping that it's all going to be good. It's going to really go amazing. You're going to enjoy. You're going to have fun. And I know it's weekend. Be careful. Be safe. Don't do what God isn't going to do. Don't do what God ain't going to like. Do only the things that are connected to God. Yeah, because God wants the best for you. He really does. I appreciate you all. I really, really appreciate you all for being here, for always standing by, for always following us, for always sharing, for always liking, commenting, keeping the comment section on fire. I really do not take it for granted. I really appreciate you all so, so very much. And I'm praying that God is going to do much more in your life than you can ever think, ask, or imagine. So today we're going to be praying that God is going to help us, that we are going to just stay peace and he's going to fight for us we're going to let him do the fighting and he'll fight greatly say he's just taking all the cup of fury and all that and giving it to our enemies god knows how to do a battle thingy he's a mighty man in battle he knows how to do the battle thingy so well so let's let him do the battles for us okay yes yeah, so let's Let's pray. Father, we thank you this day, O oh Lord. We appreciate you, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, that you're going to help us, O oh God, to allow you to fight our battles because you're the greatest, you're the greatest battle warrior. You're the greatest fighter ever, O oh God. Father, help us, O oh God, to depend on you, to believe in you, that if we hand over our battles to you, O oh God, you will do vengeance diligently. You are a faithful father, O oh Lord. But even at that, Lord, please temper justice with mercy because there's some people that. As much as we want you to deal with them, we also feel a little bit sorry for them. But Lord, please help us, oh God, that we're not going to take revenge into our own hands. But we're going to allow you to do the vengeance for us because you'll do it perfectly. So Lord, we are grateful. Bless all your children all over the world. Give us an amazing weekend. Let's have a great time. Let's have a time of our lives. Lord, we bless you. We magnify you because you deserve it. You are God all by yourself. Blessed be your holy name in all the earth. You deserve all our praise. Put now forevermore. For in Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints shall say, Ginomus, Amen. Okay, guys. So we have our audio Bible on TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, Instagrams, LinkedIn, and all social media platforms we're on by the grace of God. And we are hoping that you can go on there, listen to the um, chapter of the Bible every single day, grow your faith. You know, when you Grow your faith is a good thing. Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What better way is there than to listen to the word of God and grow? Like I said, sometimes you listen, you might not even understand the scripture. It might not even make sense to you. Just listen anyway. When the time is right, the Holy Spirit is going to bring that scripture to your remembrance. But if you don't read it, what will the Holy Spirit bring to your remembrance? Nothing. 
But if there is something in there, when the time is right, the Holy Spirit is going to bring it up. I've given my testimony several times about how the Holy Spirit brought a scripture to my mind. And I was even thinking that it was um, a quote. I thought it was a quote. Then I realized that no, it wasn't a quote. It was a scripture. And I was so happy. I was so excited. I was so totally and completely blessed by it. You see? So people of God, you cannot afford not to listen to the scripture. You cannot afford not to, to, to enjoy, to grow your faith. You need the word of God. You really, really need the word of God. Okay, guys? So get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates each time we we'll upload a new video or we get to go live. It has been your very own girl, Princess Clayton, Queen of Hearts, and laughter. <laughs> So until tomorrow, guys, let's get a great time. Let's get to have a high, a high or some time in the presence of God. I'm glad you're here today. I always get sad. I love you so very much, but God loves you way, way more. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for another amazing session. We thank you for being there for us. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for caring for us. We thank you for blessing us the way you do. We thank you for going all out. We thank you for your word today, oh God. Your word and your promises there. Yeah, and amen. You're not a man. You never lie. We thank you for giving us another amazing session today, oh God. And we pray, oh God, that our lives will never be the same again. That as we continuously imbibe your word, as we continuously study your word and take it in, oh God, it's going to begin to transform our lives. You said that we should be renewed by the transforming of our lives, oh God. That your word is going to continuously transform us. And as we begin to have koinonia with you, as we begin to have intercourse with you, as we begin to continuously study the word, oh God, it's going to bring transformation that will be very evident in our lives. When people look at us, they'll be able to say of the truth, these ones have been with God. Father, we say thank you. We appreciate you. We do not take anything you do for us for granted. Be thou exalted, O oh God, because you deserve it. For in Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints shall say, Ginomus, Amen, Amen, and Amen. So, guys, we'll have to read this audio Bible again one more time because the other time we had a little bit of noises. I always say that I don't want to take anything for granted. Sometimes I feel like, oh, Maybe it wasn't loud enough. Maybe it was loud enough. And then we get to miss it out. So for the sake of not being sure, and we don't want to take any in case or in case it is, let's just do it again. Okay. Isaiah chapter 51. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock whence he are yearning. And to the whole of the pit whence he had digged. Look unto Abraham your father and unto Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. And he will make her wilderness like Eden. And her days are like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Hearken unto me my people and give ear unto me. O oh, my nation, for a law shall proceed from me. I will make my judgment to rest. Hearken unto me, my, my people, and give ear unto me, O oh, my nation, for a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. My righteousness is near, my salvation is gone forth, and my arm shall judge the people. The isles shall wait upon me, and on my arms shall they trust. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment. And they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their revilings. For the moth shall eat them up like a garment, and the worm shall eat them like wool. But my righteousness shall be forever, and my salvation from generation to generation. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake, as in the ancient days, in the generation of old. Are thou not in that her? Awake, awake, 
put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake, as in the ancient days, in the generations of old. Art thou not it that had cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? Art thou not it which had dried the sea, the waters of the great deep, that had made the depths of the sea a way for the the ransom to pass over. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. I, even I, am he that comforted you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die and of the son of man which shall be made a grass? And forgettest the Lord, thy maker, that hath stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and has feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor as if he were ready to destroy? Where is the fury of the oppressor? The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed and that he should not die in the pit nor that his bread should fail. But I am the Lord thy God that divided the sea, whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is his name. And I have put my words in thy mouth, and I have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand, that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth, and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord, the cup of his fury. Thou hast drunken the dregs of the cup of trembling and wrung them out. There is none to guide her among all the sons whom she had brought forth. Neither is there any that taketh her by the hand of all the sons that she had brought up. These two things are come unto thee. Who shall be sorry for thee? Desolation and destruction and the famine, and the sword. By whom shall I comfort thee? Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets, as a wild bull in a net. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. Therefore hear now this, thou afflicted, and drunken, but not with wine. Thus saith thy Lord, the Lord, and thy God, that pleaded the cause of his people, Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling and even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again, but I will put it into the hand of them that afflicted thee, which have said to thy soul, Bow down, that we may go over. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. This is the word of the Lord, and all the saints shall say a ginormous thanks be to God. Okay, guys, until tomorrow, don't forget, study Isaiah chapter 52. And let's come back here tomorrow. Have a great weekend, people. Ciao. Ciao, ciao.